And good morning. It's good to see you all good this morning. morning. Yes. Uh, I'm Nancy Kaysen. I have a little gift shop downtown called the Red Ribbon, and this is my co-host, Brene Beatty. Retired. With a broken leg. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying so, to hide it. Thanks, Nancy. Yes, and we love, we love the name being across yes. the screen like that because you can't see my boots or Brene's broken leg. Um, you know, we normally have uh, four-legged animals on yes. at this time, and... Folks, it's really tough for them to go by in the mornings and pick yes. these animals up. And we had a little snafu this morning, yes. so they're not going to be here. So, Brene and I will do a song and dance routine for you for the first 13 and a half minutes of this show. And I am lying to you. But I would like to say <laughs> that the fashionista that I am, it's now time for you all to get out your Christmas sweaters, tacky yes. or not. I See, I have my mm -hmm. snowman. And, uh, There's no snow in sight, but no. I'm, I'm hoping. And here it is, going to be mid-60s today, and so I have on a Christmas shirt. Shirt, yes. I yes. like that shirt. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, and you have on a Christmas bracelet. I do. I have on a, we have those at the Red Ribbon, in case anybody's interested. Yeah. And, uh, and, and earrings. And earrings. <laughs> and so, uh, and it's time to get out your winter white pants, too, okay? Yes. Fat, like I say, fashionista that I am. But uh, during this first segment, since we don't have any dogs, we're going to start with Brene talking a little bit about dogs. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Red Ribbon, and then we do have a guest. So yes. So tell us what's happening in the dog world. Okie dokie. Well, I was going through my stuff that I kind mm -hmm. of gathered to mm -hmm. uh, share. Thanks and, to the banner. Yes, thanks to the banner. And I ran across this, and it's it's been a while, and I never got around to talking about it, but pet oxygen masks. Uh, the ESP, Exclusively Shelter Pets, group is trying to raise money, and I'm sure they're still trying to raise money, haven't heard anything about it lately, but uh, to provide every fire truck oh, I read about with that. an yes. oxygen mask for pets uh, because they can save lives. Mm -hmm. And lots of the big cities, all of them have them and everything. So let me give you this phone number. It's 728-5414, and you can call and get more, uh, more information about it. But uh, these specially designed masks can be used for conscious pets suffering from smoke inhalation and also for unconscious pets suffering from exposure to dangerous, dangerous toxic fumes. And uh, it's, it's just really great. You know, yes, it is. I mean, if you're a family and your house catches on fire, I mean, that's sad if everybody gets out alive. But uh, y'all might remember little Lexi, that old dachshund that the, her family's house caught on fire and she ran out and it took months and months. Uh, Bradley and Veterinary mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Hospital took her on Georgetown Road, took her and uh, she took a long time for her to recover, but she did recover. Right. And uh, so, you know, folks, there's something you can do. If you know somebody that has everything and you don't, happen to find something at the Red Ribbon, you can send a gift to a rescue organization Absolutely. in their honor. Absolutely. Or you can do both if you That's, really love that them. That is true, if you yeah, really love them. you can. Okay, then uh, this coming Wednesday, yes, December the 12th, you know, I'm retired and I have a hard time remembering. Uh, you don't even know what a calendar is. I know, I, okay. I don't, I don't. Anyway, Wednesday, December the 12th, Chili's will donate 10% of the sales you bring in to um, Dixie Day Spay. So what you need to do, there's, you can go to the Dixie Day Spay website, and that is, I don't see it on it's here. It's probably a .org. Yeah, We're it big is. on .org around yeah. here. Uh, I think it's Dixie whatever. Okay. Anyway, um, you can Google it. How's that? Or you can call them, and uh, it's 473-7008. That's Chili's, but they can tell you how, how to do that. But anyway, everything that you purchase from 11 a.m. until 11 p.m., if you bring this flyer in, Chili's will give 10% of your, your ticket. And their chipotle chicken is wonderful. Yes, it is. It is. So, and you can go for lunch, and you go for dinner, and you could have your office party there that day. Absolutely. You know, what a wonderful great. thing to yeah. do. Kill two birds with one stone. Exactly. So that's something good. And also, this Saturday, in case y'all haven't noticed, I climb on the dog soapbox yeah. regularly. Yeah. It's what I do. I'm retired and, and gone to the dogs. Anyway, this Saturday at Tractor Supply, the Dixie Day Spay and Cleveland for a No Kill will be having an adoption event. And it's usually from 10 until 2. And let me say a word though. If you go and there are really cute puppies and you think, oh, so and so would like a puppy, I think I'll get it. 
please don't do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, you know, the day after Christmas and in January, you can get thousands of puppies mm -hmm. who were given as unwanted Christmas presents mm -hmm. or the kids, you know, uh, the whole next year, you know, the kids lost interest, right. the mom doesn't want right. to take care of them, so we'll just take them to the shelter. So please do not give animals as gifts. Absolutely. Okie dokie. Now, let me, let me buddy yes. in here and just do a little okay. bit of red ribbon so that we have time <laughs> for this. Yes. But we have some exciting things happening at the red ribbon. Today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Now, Three day event. Today, in case you all did not know, is St. Nicholas Day. I did not know it that. Is. Well, I did that, it but is. I didn't remember. I, it's St. Nicholas Day. So today, at the Red Ribbon, we're going to be open from 10 until 6, and you receive 6% off of your total purchase. But we're also going to have different Santas, which St. Nicholas, yes. uh, in the store at different times. It'll be rotating. 10 to 12 will be the Pipkas, 12 to 2, Buyer's Choice. Two to four possible dreams, four to six Jim Shore and the other Santa's, Santas, including the ornaments. And those will be 25% off during their designated time. Oh, how cool. So if you need a St. Nicholas, uh, then come by and you will get 6% off. We will also have refreshments and we will have free gift wrapping and Flavis's Famous Fudge free, <laughs> which is wonderful. It wonderful. is wonderful. It is really fudge. good. It is. It's really good. Trust me, it's really it's good. It's really good. Now, December the 7th is our seventh anniversary of the Red Ribbon. I know. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And so you receive 7% off of your total purchases on Friday. How clever. It's really, it gets better. Oh, okay. You'll be open from 7 to 7. <laughs> All right, from 7 to 9 is pajama party. If you come in your pajamas, uh -huh. which I will have mine on from 7 to 9, you will receive an additional 7% off. And from 9 to 12 is Christmas sweater time. Tacky or not, you get an additional 7% if you have on a Christmas sweater. 12 to 5 is wear red. So if you have on red, you'll get an additional 7%. And then 5 to 7 is uh, festive, festive wine time. Yes, yes, it's after hours type situation. So be festive and you get an additional 7% off. And then Saturday the 8th is our 8th Christmas at the Red Ribbon. Wow, yes. I know. So we'll be open from 10 to 2, regular store hours that day. And we'll be giving you 8% off your total purchases. And you'll also get a free Christmas ornament for shopping Whoa. with us. So today... Friday and Saturday at the Red Ribbon. And if you didn't get all this information, call and we'll tell it to you, 473-1114, or just come by and say what's happening. Yeah. And because we'd love for you, to, we're a little White House with red trim next to the old YMCA. Yes. Caddy Corner from Broad Street, just parking lot over from uh, Joe Rogers. Yes. All right, so you have, you have another Yes, creature I thing. I do, I do. All right. Uh, you know, I get on my soapbox about pit bulls. Yes. And I just wanted to share some information with you. The truth about pit bull temperament. Yeah, you know, pit bull is not a breed. It's a type of dog. They're all terriers. But the American Temperament Test Society has given pit bull type dogs a combined passing score of 86.2%. Now that's American Pit Bull Terriers, American Staffordshire Terriers, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, and Bull Terriers. Now, to put this in perspective, Australian Shepherds passed at 80.7%. Okay. Golden Retrievers, 83.8%. Okay. Cocker Spaniel, 81.7%. Collies, 79.2%. Whoa, whoa. And Shetland Sheepdogs, um, the little Shelties, yes, sixty-seven point three percent. Well, you know, years ago in Victorian England, oh. the, the pit bull—that's what was the family dog. Yeah. Well, here in this country, at the turn of the nineteenth to twentieth okay. century, yeah, they Victorian were era, the, right? Yeah, here, they were called the nanny dogs. Okay. Every little rascals. We're dating ourselves. Yes, we are. Y'all remember the little rascals? Y'all may not even know who yeah. the little rascals are. <laughs> anyway, oh, good. There was a little dog with a black eye. Yes. And I forget his name, but anyway, oh, he was a my pit goodness. bull. Oh my goodness! And the most decorated military dog, Stubby, mm -hmm. was a pit bull. And they, they have pit bulls now over in Afghanistan and everything, and right. they are serving their country. So we're not saying everybody go out to pit, pit no, bull. No, no, no. Because your personality might not be such that you need a pit bull. You they may need, need a poodle, strong people. You know, but still, uh, we need Don't hate them just because of right. the way they look, because the media and... Pardon me, but it's the truth. The idiots at the other end of the leash. <laughs> That's you know, right. They're the ones that are responsible for this misconception. And, you know, breeders who breed for looks and not for temperament. Um, you know, and I'm not saying every pit bull is a 
family dog. Oh, no, no, no because we know that's not the case. Yeah. But it's just kind of like every chihuahua is not the family dog. If uh, chihuahuas were as big as pit bulls, oh. there would be many, many, many mm -hmm. fatalities. And chihuahuas <laughs> will not be our family dog because <laughs> they yap. You know, yeah, they they yeah, they're ankle biters. They are. And I know people like them, and you know, there's nothing wrong with them if you like them. But that's right. I like the big solid. That's ones. right. And and they they make nice little lap dogs, and they're very loyal little dogs. Yeah. But I'm like Brene. I want I want the big dog. Yeah. I, I want to know We're that there's dog a people. dog there. Yeah. And uh, and so I think it's very interesting that the golden retriever was that yeah. what you said? Golden retriever is below the pit bull. Yeah. And Here again, type. folks, we're not we're not saying that we are condoning everybody to go out and get a yeah. pit bull. That no. is not what we're saying. So please do not go around saying Brene and Nancy want everybody to have a pit bull. That is not what we're saying. We're just saying, you know, be open minded about all breeds yes. of dog. And any dog can bite. Yes. And any dog can be loyal. A dog is a dog is a dog. It's you know, pun punish the deed, not the breed. Right. You know? And I had a poodle one time and she <laughs> Love to bite people that she thought was getting ready to touch me. Yeah, so Poodles you know, can be it, very protective. Ab too. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. All right, folks, we'll okay. be right back, and you won't be see just Brene and Nancy. You're going to see somebody else, and we're going to talk yes. about running. We're not going to do it, but we're going to no. talk about it. So don't go away. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> I'll hop. Great local sports right here on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Keep up to date on all your Walker Valley sports news. Wednesdays with the Walker Valley Sports Zone. Get a behind the scenes look at all the local high school area football with the pregame Thursdays at 10. And it's a Friday night tradition. Football Friday, every Friday night at 11 o'clock, right here on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Logan Thompson, attorneys at law, have built a firm offering quality legal services to the people and businesses of Southeast Tennessee. We have achieved expertise in all areas of law in order to represent our clients in a manner they need, deserve, and have come to expect. Logan Thompson, with nine attorneys and an extensive and competent support staff, is available to provide representation in various legal areas, including family law, social security benefits, personal injury, criminal defense, workman's compensation, as well as business and complex litigation matters. At Logan Thompson, we have been building a tradition of legal services for over 40 years. We have developed the finest legal services and are proficient in providing you with representation you can trust. Give us a call at 423-476-2251 to schedule your free consultation. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David, and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Town Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don for Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Ledford in Athens will save you at least 2000 bucks. Don Ledford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. 
Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. We would be back, and I told yes. you it wouldn't be just the two of us. We're so glad to have Angela Mathis with us today. Thank you, Nancy. She's from the American Cancer Society, and they have activities all the time, but, but they have a holiday activity we want to talk about today. It's called the Reindeer Run. It is. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we did a one mile. Oh, actually, we just did the 5K last year, but this year we've added a one mile mm -hmm. and a 10K for those more serious runners. Oh, wow. Serious yeah. runners. Watch me raise my <laughs> hand for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pass on the one mile. Yeah, yeah. I will too. Okay. Now, okay. how far is 5K? It is 3.1 miles. Okay. So, so a 10, 10 is 6.2. 6.2. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Further so, than I want to go. Now, you know, there you go. All you sports. Cameron Fisher, you get out yeah. there and do this. Are all you watching us, Cameron? Sports. Yes. You better be watching this morning, Cameron. All right. Now, first of all, the name is Darling. Reindeer oh, that Run. Is yes. Precious. Oh, and I've and got a little the, sign. Oh, how cute. Yes. Is that not cute? <laughs> That's adorable. Look at that Reindeer Run. Right. That's adorable. D David Orr from Cleveland Utilities designs our shirt each really? year. So this is his new design this year. Oh. So. You know, I, I love He's, David. David's, David's a great worker out there, and he... Very helps, talented. He helps me out with Chairs Jubilee. Yeah. Occasionally has to put the grill together that they donate instead of just bringing it over and hand it to me. <laughs> so I appreciate you, David. I hope you're watching today. Yes. All right. Now, we're going to talk about this is a fundraiser for yes. the American Cancer Society. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Okay. Well, right now, um, the early registration has closed. It closed last night. Um, so anyone that's interested in running just needs to come out to Home Depot at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, we're December gonna be, the 8th. Yes, so right, we're going to yes. be staging in the Home Depot parking lot. And how the run's going to go, it's going to go down Freedom, hit Mohawk, then enter the Greenway. Oh, okay. If okay. you're doing a, the 5K, you're going to turn around at Tinsley and come back. If you're doing the 10K, you're going from Home Depot to the Church of God headquarters and then coming back <laughs> all on the Greenway. So that's a long, long track. We walked, it, we walked it on Saturday, and it's definitely a... A hike. Yeah. It's a hike. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're going to stage at Home Depot. Yes. And so everybody needs to be there at 8:30. Now, here again, folks, this is a fundraiser yes. for the How American Cancer is Society. So you don't just show up and start running. Right. The, the, everyone that's pre-registered will show up. They'll check in at their their check-in spot. Everyone else is twenty-five dollars. They get a shirt. Oh, the how lovely cute. design. Oh, I love the design. I do love the I design. I do too. And uh, they'll also get a goodie bag, uh, and then they'll be competing. We have categories starting from ten and under, and then every ten-year increments, the women and the men, uh, first, second, and third place. We have the top three finishers, first, second, and third place, and we have survivors. Oh. Um, F oh, top finishers for, for cancer survivors. Do you have a category for nine years older than dirt? <laughs> <laughs> With a boot on the yeah. Yeah. With a boot on the yeah. yes. Well, we have a lot of people that are coming to walk. I mean, there are a lot yeah. of people are like, well, you know, I haven't walked in years, but I yeah. want that shirt. Yeah, I know. Okay. That is so All right. Yeah. Yeah, is it a white t-shirt with that design it's on? It's actually brown. We're doing oh, okay. a mocha shirt. Uh, and it'll be with white around it and so that the, oh. the deer sounds really, really pretty. And last year we did black and um, you can't buy the shirt. You oh. have to participate in the walk run. Oh, that makes it so. very okay. yeah, So it really, if I wanted a shirt, I could give you $25 and start. <laughs> and have a flavors pick me up somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Right. At the end of the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. A mohawk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right there. Oh, I mean, it's awful, folks. I used to play tennis. I used to run. I probably could not make it a block. Yeah. I used to walk a lot. You yes, know, my you did. dogs. dogs. But now, let me ask you, there's certain things. Is this a sanctioned run? Do I... 
It is not a sanctioned okay. run. It okay. is something. There are other reindeer runs across the country, but we just happen to share the same name. Okay. But it is just an American Cancer Society event for Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I just love it, folks. I just think it's wonderful. I think the reindeer run for the Christmas season mm -hmm. is just wonderful. I, I just, I think that is so neat. And the fact that it's going to the American Cancer Society. Now, yes. let's talk a minute about the American okay. Cancer Society. Yeah. All right. Yes. yes. Well, we are actually there's so much going on with with the relay right now. This this money actually funds into our relay for okay. life for, for Bradley County. But um, the American Cancer Society, I always want to know what what does the organization do? Um, for locally, uh, locally, um, <laughs> we do we have a look good feel better session at Tennessee Cancer Specialist. Um, we also have um, Hope Lodge. It's located in. The closest one is Nashville. We also have one in Birmingham and Memphis. There's one in New Orleans, and there, um, oh, there's one in Atlanta. And patients can stay there for free. It's like the Ronald McDonald House. Oh, okay. Um, for adults. For, for children oh, or adults. Oh, okay. Anybody that's going through cancer treatment um, within in that area can come and stay there for free as long as they want to. Wow. So, oh, wow. So that's one of the many services. But most of our money um, goes to research. 46% of everything that's raised goes to research. 50% goes to our patient services, our education, and our advocacy, and 4% goes to administrative. Oh, so we have one wonderful. of the lowest. Yes, yes of, you do. Yeah, yes. Percentage. And that's wonderful. It is. I think people don't mind donating to something like that. That's just like United Way, only 1% goes to administrative. Right. Uh, if you know it's going. National, right. Yes, and you know going the rest the of it's yes. coming here. Now it says here research, education, ad, ad, advocacy, and patient services is what the money is going to go to. Four, and uh, and you've told us part of it. Yes. You said the Hope Center. Mm -hmm. The Hope, well, we also have uh, scholarships for kids who have had cancer. Oh, wow. um, we have um, a, a children's camp uh, that they can go to. The first week is just for uh, kids that ha are going through cancer or have been cancer survivors. The next mm -hmm. week is uh, Sibs Camp, where we call them. So oh. the kids, oh, a lot neat. of times you don't you don't think about it, but, but children who have cancer, their their siblings feel left out. Yeah, Absolutely. So we have a camp just for them. So the How next wonderful. week they wonderful. get to come and they they get to get away from it all. Right. That's and that fabulous. is great. Yeah. And and the parents are so doted on the child that has the disease. Well, the child that needs you know, so much. And that's, they do. It, they Care require and so much. Yeah. And the other siblings, like you say, are just kind of on the sidelines right. so this is wonderful well and the, the camp actually we have oncologists there so that if, if children are at the oncology camp and they're going through treatment they can continue with their treatment oh, cool. and i've been i've been fortunate enough to go and except for the fact that some of them had lost their hair or a limb or something like that mm. they would um they were doing everything else you would see at camp singing this the songs doing the crafts Fishing, I mean, all the things, <laughs> everything. Words. So that's one of the one yeah. of the really feel good things um, yeah. that we get to see. Um, the, a lot of things that you don't see is people in, up in the Capitol trying to pass laws and things like that. Um, like the Tennessee no smoking, um, that was one of our big things that we pushed a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. having a smoke free restaurant and things like that. So we definitely um, spend a lot of time on that, but that, that's split up amongst all of the things that we work with right. as advocacy. Yeah. And, and that and that is great. I mean, it really, really is. Now, where is this camp? That's it's right above um, between. Don't know. I can't tell you the city. Okay, <laughs> so, all right. But it's it's close to Nashville. Okay. So oh, okay. It, yeah. So it's, all it's right. every every state has one, but ours is close to Nashville. Okay. So we oh, have okay. one for the state. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's. I was just kind of wondering if there were because there's several camps here. There's Camp Lookout Mountain and Camp yeah. John Knox. I didn't know whether we you rented you, one of those camps for that time or not, but you actually go to. The American Cancer Society well, camp. No, it's actually what you're saying. It's one of the ones that we rent. Cause oh, okay. I remember being part of um, a church camp many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and we used the same camp. For oh, that. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, yeah. I used to lifeguard at Camp Lookout years ago when I was a teenager and used that was church camp. So, yeah. uh, and, I, and I know Camp John Knox, we used to take the, uh, the Civitan Club used to take their mentally challenged Children, children there, there. so yeah. so camping is wonderful oh it's it a wonderful experience it yes it and so many kids today don't get to experience nature right <laughs> they're inside i know, <laughs> you know? well my and kid thinks camping is the super eight you know rather than going to the hilton so anyway all right let's yeah. get back to angela here and talk <laughs> about this um the I, it, I noticed that the pickup forms which we've already 
registration is over, but it was Vendor Realty, Cleveland Utilities, and Mark's Doghouse, so we do want to thank them, don't we? Yes, we do. In fact, um, one, of the, one of the things that we've added this year uh, amongst the, the one mile and the 10K is uh, we're having lunch. Mark's Doghouse is, is bringing out hot dogs and chips and oh, drinks. Cool. So after everybody comes back, from their healthy run and walk, <laughs> they can have a hot dog. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Guilt free. So yeah, guilt free. And it's, that's all part of their, the registration yeah. fee. So oh, there's, cool. there's no additional charge for that. And see, that's so neat. Yeah. So. I mean, it really, really is. And the camaraderie yes. yeah, that you've yeah. got there. Well, we have about 175 registered right now. Wow. That's so fabulous. So if we, if we double it like we did last year, I'm scared. Yes. <laughs> oh. No, I think it'll be. It's gonna be great. I mean, yeah. um, my goal in my mind was 200, and I'm sure that we'll we'll exceed that. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So you have 175 pre-registered. Correct. And that's not counting who will show up at Home Depot at 8:30 Saturday morning. Exactly. And they just need to show up. 8.30. We're getting started at 9.30, so 8.30 for anybody that's wanting to, to sign up. Yeah. Because when we run out of shirts, I ordered 250 shirts. When we run out of shirts, there's, there's no more. Okay, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. You yeah. still get a shirt if you didn't pre-register, as long as you still have some in the box. Yes. Okay, yes. I understand. <laughs> Been there, done that too. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to be sure, because we're getting up close to a commercial yes. here, but this is Saturday at registrations at 8.30. Yes. At... At Home, Home Depot's Depot. parking Home Depot. lot. Home Depot's parking lot. And uh, the race will start at 930. And you're going to run a lot, okay? Yes. Yeah, a lot. And now, we're going to leave Home Depot and we're going where? You're going onto Freedom, okay. which is the little road that runs there on the parking lot. Hit Mohawk and then onto the Greenway. And then the rest of the run is on the Greenway. Okay, so once you get on the Greenway, you just you're, have to... Watch for people like Brene who's walking their dog. You don't exactly. have to worry about <laughs> Well, not, kind of motor, not Saturday. I will be walking. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you said if I'm going to run the short one, the 5K, I'm going from? You're going from Home Depot's parking lot to Tinsley, and you're turning around. And we'll have people out there t telling you where to turn around. A giant sign that says, turn around, 5 <laughs> 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 I love it. I love so, it. Uh, but, and, and then if I'm running the, the big one, uh, which I'm not, the 10K, I'm going all the way down to the Church of God. You are. Yes. At 25th Street. Yes. No, I'm not doing no, that either. Not in this lifetime. Mm, no. <laughs> and I'm quite sure, Angela, that you all would be, if you don't want to run, uh, you still don't get a t-shirt, but, but you would take donations. Oh, definitely. That's, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Of course we would. Okay. So they could just show up at Home Depot and make a donation? Yes. And, and that would watch wonderful. all those people yeah, run. That, that would be wonderful because, like, you know, like we touched on a very few things, but if, if anybody wants to know like everything that we do, I mean, there's, we could spend a whole show just oh, talking about things. Yeah. Cancer.org or their 1-800 number, which is 1-800-ACS-234, that's it, 234, um, five. ACS-234, okay, yeah. I got you. It's, yeah. is our um, phone number and it's 24 hours. There's oncologists on standby that can answer questions for people or it can give you information about events. So. And I will say this, when my father-in-law was diagnosed with esophageal carcinoma, mm -hmm. we had no idea what that was, and someone gave me that phone number. I called and told them exactly what the oncologist had told us, and they were wonderful. I cannot tell you, and I have passed that number on to so many friends who have been diagnosed, and, and it's wonderful. Thank you. It really is. Thank you for using it, because it's, it's I did, there. I did, so, yeah. I did. You know, <laughs> hopefully I won't have to use it anymore, yeah. but I did. Angela, thank you so thank much. You, I hope, thank you. I hope you have 250 people show up and every one of those darling t-shirts gets gone, okay? Yes, thank you. Because they are, show that t-shirt one more time. Oh, show it. Well, hey, yes. It's just precious. Is that not precious? That, that's just Look at that. absolutely adorable. So 8.30 Saturday morning at Home Depot. Get you a big breath and take off. Take off. It's for the American Cancer Society. Yes. For a very worthwhile cause. Yes. Don't go away. We'll be right back and we do have another guest coming on. So, Angela, thank you so Town much. Town Americana, really where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Lefford in Athens will save you at least 2000 bucks. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. Hello, I'm Bill Odom. Hi, and I'm Tammy Odom. We want to invite you to join us on Joyous Living Today for interviews, testimonies, and gospel music by special guests and Dixie Sunshine. Right here on WTNB, Sundays at 4 p.m. 
and Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Jesus, Jesus, the light of the world. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Logan Thompson, Attorneys at Law, have built a firm offering quality legal services to the people and businesses of Southeast Tennessee. We have achieved expertise in all areas of law in order to represent our clients in a manner they need, deserve, and have come to expect. Logan Thompson, with nine attorneys and an extensive and competent support staff, is available to provide representation in various legal areas, including family law, social security benefits, personal injury, criminal defense, workman's compensation, as well as business and complex litigation matters. At Logan Thompson, we have been building a tradition of legal services for over 40 years. We have developed the finest legal services and are proficient in providing you with representation you can trust. Give us a call at 423-476-2251 to schedule your free consultation. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. And good morning. We are back with you. Yes, and we are. We are with so Melissa. glad to have Melissa Woody yes, with we us. we are. And Melissa, uh, Melissa's office is at the Chamber of Commerce. She's actually the uh, tourism. What is your title? I, I'm vice president for Convention and Visitors Convention Bureau. Convention and Visitors Bureau, and that includes tourism. Yes. And I heard Melissa talk a couple of weeks ago at the Main Street meeting. So I said, Melissa, you got to come on TV because everybody that was watching today didn't hear what you had to say. It was so <laughs> fascinating. So just tell us a little bit about the history that we're dealing with right now. Okay. Well, at, my job at the Chamber is to not only promote our area, but it's also to um, think of ways that we can keep a visitor here longer, that we can attract a visitor mm -hmm. to this area. And so one of those ways that's uh, an underdeveloped um, area is heritage. Heritage tourists they're, they're, they spend more than other tourists spend. Oh. Um, they're, they're a growing segment of the tourism population. There's a, um, a study that the state of Tennessee does that every dollar invested in tourism promotion and development yields $19 in return. Whoa. Oh. So tourism helps your economy. Tourism yes. is a boost for your economy. So it's very important to have 
um, reasons for people to come see you. So what Nancy um, heard at the Main Street meeting was a project that we're working on in Charleston, and we've we've talked ab about this a lot. But you know, some people haven't heard about it yet, and mm -hmm. I, I'm uh, it's my mission that everyone should hear about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but we are doing a we're developing a heritage center in Charleston, and I'm, I've been working with the Charleston Calhoun Hawassi Historical Society. And that's a great group of people who really care about their community. They care about the stories that um, that their community was founded upon. And so, I, you know, I, I want to to work with them to share this this story. A lot of people don't realize that Charleston, Tennessee, has a national story. You know, you guys have been to probably Chickamauga Battlefield mm -hmm. or to um, Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. Imagine those those fields completely. Um, free of markers or statues and all it is is just rolling hills and rolling grass nobody would know what the stories were in those Absolutely. areas exactly. nobody would know the battles fought there nobody would know the national story we've got that kind of site in charleston tennessee charleston wow. was the home of fort cass which was a federal fort um, and that was the start, according to the U.S. military, that was the start of the Trail of Tears. Now, there are many different schools of thought about where the start of the Trail of Tears is. Um, of course, there are wonderful monuments down at Ross's Landing in Chattanooga and millions of dollars worth of Cherokee artwork and interpretation. And yes, it was one of the starting points of the Trail of Tears. But there were three starting points. Ross's Landing was one of those, Gunner's Landing in Alabama, and then Fort Cass was where all of the military headquarters, all of the operational, um, all of the uh, orders, the orders for the entire removal were all given from General Winfield Scott, who was stationed at Fort Cass, which is present day Charleston. Now, I tend to think that the start of the Trail of Tears is from each of the homesteads, mm -hmm. the doorsteps that those families had to yeah. leave from their, from their homes, and, and you know, that is the true start of the Trail of Tears. But according to the U.S. military, it's Charleston. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> There's not a sign. <laughs> There's not a marker. There isn't anything that interprets that except for a brochure that we did at the chamber. Um, it's called the Passport to Cherokee Heritage. And we've got that at the chamber for, for folks to come and pick up. And I and got it one does. of those at the Main Street yeah. and read it. And it's fascinating. I mean, it's a wonderful Good. brochure. I'll Good. Have to come down I'm glad you. Yeah. It's great. It's it is. great. I've got them out in the car. Great. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I carry them around with me. But I love the story. Why yeah. is it called a passport? Yes. It is called a passport because you used to have to have a passport to pass through this area. This was not the United States. Even we're sitting here at this studio at Cleveland State. This was not part of the United States at one time. This was the Cherokee Nation. Downtown Cleveland was the town of Amohi. Um, Charleston was a major gateway to this sovereign nation that operated here um, in, in our area. It was the Cherokee Nation. It was not the United States of America. So only after 1838 and the removal of the Cherokee did white settlers start settling this area and it became part of the United States because of the result of signed treaties. And I won't get too far into that history, but before those treaties of 1835, and, and the years after that, w this was a thriving sovereign nation with missions and families and stores and farmland that was not the United States. And so Charleston was one of those points that you had to have a passport. Um, you would issue a passport at the, at the federal agency. The Indian agency was last, um, the last location of the Indian agency was located in Charleston, Tennessee, and, um, or at the agency area was what it was referred to at that point. And at one time, you would be issued or have your passport checked as you came through that checkpoint. See, that's just so wild. Yeah. I mean, wow. I just, yeah. but I think that's so great that the, that the brochure is called yeah. Passport. Yeah. yeah. So that carries that concept yeah. and just kind of emphasizes that fact that this was another nation that was here. Mm -hmm. um, because the other side of the Hiawassee River, the Calhoun side, that was the white side of the river. And the funny thing is the... Um, Sons of the American Revolution, we were talking about them having a booth at our Cowpea Festival when we had the International Cowpea Festival in Cookoff, and he said, well, our history really ends in Calhoun because we were over yeah. in this area because during the American Revolution, this was the Cherokee Nation. Isn't it wasn't part something? of the American Revolution. Yeah. That so, is just wild. You know, when you think about that, it's just hard to wrap yeah. your mind around you know, the fact it that is. this was a different country. And um, so, you know, with that in mind, we want to make sure that this story is being told. Now, you know, girls, it's not 
a fun story to tell because no, it's, it's a not. tragic story. Yes, it is. But the fact that this country was here before, you know, this nation was here before the removal, you know, we can definitely talk about the, the thriving families, the missions, the farmlands, the agency area. The agency was kind of like an embassy. To, it was the federal mm -hmm. government's property, but it was kind of like an embassy to the Cherokee is the best way that we can kind of mm -hmm. relate to it this in this day and age. And, um, but and people need to know this story. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it became, you know, once Fort Cass was set up, it became uh, they, that federal property was already there. And so the military used what federal property was already there and set up Fort Cass. Now, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Red Clay and the agency area mm -hmm. or Fort Cass? Red Clay was the last seat of government for the Cherokee Nation. It was their last council grounds. So if, if you equate that in terms that we know, it was the last Washington, D.C., so to speak, for the Cherokee Nation yeah. before the removal. So they had all of their government meetings there once it was deemed unlawful for them to gather and govern in, in Georgia. They just came across the Georgia line and set up their oh, capital. Okay, that's why we're so close right, right there. Okay. Right. So they found that beautiful Sapphire Spring and that was a good place mm -hmm. to set up their capital outside of the, the uh, confines of Georgia and the restrictions that had been set on them. And so they just moved over the, the uh, Tennessee line and set up their capital there. So for five years, their, their council grounds uh, was there their last council grounds and then so so all over this area I mean it wasn't just confined you know when we go to a state park it just seems like oh okay this little area mm -hmm. but there were Cherokee living all over the place you know it's talked about how John Ross lived in Rossville Georgia or the Ross house his last home before the removal was right in Flint Springs mm -hmm. at a beautiful farm that had over 200 fruit trees on it huh. Um, and that was his last home place before the removal. Chief John Ross, he was the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation for more than 40 years. What a historical character this was, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And, and, and he was only an eighth Cherokee. He was born to a Scottish immigrant. And um, so that's why he was, one of the reasons he was so successful as their chief, because he was so great at, at um, negotiating, uh, negotiating with Western culture. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just, this is a story, and right there in Charleston, the brother of John Ross lived there in Charleston. His name was Lewis Ross, and he was the businessman of the family while John Ross was the politician. There are these amazing letters out of the original papers of John Ross of uh, from Lewis Ross to his brother when the case of, of keeping their land, John Ross carried that to the Supreme Court and did what a, a law-abiding person would do. He carried the case to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court upheld their decision, their right to stay on their lands, but President Jackson uh, veto, I guess you would call it a veto. It wouldn't be an exact veto, but anyway, he didn't agree with that decision. So he and, just usurped the power and said no. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But there are Aren't these, there are these yeah. amazing <laughs> letters that say things like, brother, we are all in this with you and fight the good fight, you know, much more eloquently than I can mm -hmm. even say, but just rip your heart out letters that say, you know, we're with you, let Where us know. Letters? They're in the papers of John Ross. And Where then I've those? seen those. It's a book, the oh. original papers of oh. John Ross. And then also um, Shirley Lawrence with the Trail of Tears Association. Shirley is just an amazing resource um, for all the work that we've done, the brochures that we've written. A lot of that information comes from Shirley and her research. Mm -hmm. And so she's she actually, um, I can't remember if it was her or um, our regional historic planner that shared with me the handwritten letters. Oh, wow. So you could see they were scanned um, yeah. through archives. Right. Yeah. And I, I stayed at my office one night till about 10.30 or 11 just reading all these letters and it just, it's, I'm telling you folks, it is better than any reality TV you could <laughs> oh, possibly get yes. on television right, right now. Yeah. This is real stuff, you know, mm -hmm. real, real stories that, that help real shape people. our yes. area, right. shape our nation. Um, you know, you're talking about, um, you know, stories that, that our nation um, was founded on. I mean, these are, these are stories that, that helped us be what we are today. And Whatever that is, good or bad, and, and all the journeys that we've gone through, there are a lot of historical things that are not so great. But it's important to share those things, mm -hmm. share those stories accurately, respectfully to the people they involve, the people that used to call this their God-given home, mm -hmm, yeah. that they believe God placed them on this land. Um, and, and so it's important for us to share these stories accurately, respectfully, and, um, and there are even more stories in right. Charleston. Yeah. And we're coming up on a commercial yep. in this, I mean, I could this listen to her, I did, for, yeah. like, for like 45 <laughs> minutes, yeah. but I will say this, 
Melissa is available to come to organizations oh, yeah. and I speak and tell you all about this and promote what she's trying to do in Charleston with this. So yes, because we are raising money. Yes, <laughs> yes. <And so> she <laughs> you knew there was a catch there. Yes. <laughs> so give her a call at the Chamber of 472-6587. That's it. Four seven two six five eight seven. And Melissa, thank you so yes. much. Oh, you're this very has welcome. Gone so fast, it, and it has gone fast. And you know, I didn't even get to touch on the Civil War and oh, the filming oh. of Wild River oh, and we'll Calpies, and yeah, you know, you so back. let's get you back. Yes, okay, I'd love folks, to. don't go away. We'll be right back. Melissa, thank you so much. That, that was, was so good. That just there. fascinates me. Yes. Just fascinating. Great local sports right here on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Keep up to date on all your Walker Valley sports news. Wednesdays with the Walker Valley Sports Zone. Get a behind the scenes look at all the local high school area football with the pregame Thursdays at 10. And it's a Friday night tradition. Football Friday, every Friday night at 11 o'clock, right here on WTNB East Tennessee Television. Logan Thompson, attorneys at law, have built a firm offering quality legal services to the people and businesses of Southeast Tennessee. We have achieved expertise in all areas of law in order to represent our clients in a manner they need, deserve, and have come to expect. Logan Thompson, with nine attorneys and an extensive and competent support staff, is available to provide representation in various legal areas, including family law, social security benefits, personal injury, criminal defense, workman's compensation, as well as business and complex litigation matters. At Logan Thompson, we have been building a tradition of legal services for over 40 years. We have developed the finest legal services and are proficient in providing you with representation you can trust. Give us a call at 423-476-2251 to schedule your free consultation. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David, and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Town Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Donald Ford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Ledford in Athens will save you at least 2000 bucks. Don Ledford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello, and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. And we 
are yes. back. And it is us, just us yes, again. Yes, just us. Because now it's time for the events calendar for you all. And again, we always thank the banner for these events. For because all of our information. They, they yes. help us out here tremendously. Now, I'm going to give a plug for Melissa and the Alto section at First Baptist Church. Uh, she said for me to do that. Yes. Uh, and they, here's a copy of that passport oh, yes. she just brought there, back. That's the copy of so, the passport. Yes. It has John Ross on it. And you can and get them down at the at chamber. At the chamber. Yes, and I can't wait to read it. The um, Christmas musical Gloria will be presented by the First Baptist Church Choir uh, Friday at 7, Saturday and Sunday at 4 and 8. That's five performances and uh, powerful music, dance, orchestra, yada, 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 wonderful, free so there, there's something for you to do this weekend for Christmas. Okay, and tonight at 7.30 at the First United Methodist Church, that's on North Okoy Street, the Metropolitan Bells will have a concert, and it's free to the public. Donations will be accepted. And I've heard they, that group, and they're wonderful. Yeah. We actually had them play one time for Evening Shade. Really? Yes, and oh, they cool. were fantastic. I love Bells. Oh, and, and to watch them work. Oh, them, oh, oh I know. They're, they're fascinating. They're very talented folks. Yes. All right, Sunday, Broad Street United Methodist Church will be doing their uh, Christmas music, sanctuary services, 830 and 1045. Uh, Come Ye Faithful, uh, string quartet, flute, organ, combined adult choirs, and combined children's choirs. Uh, so there's something you can do Sunday if you go Saturday to the First Baptist and Sunday to Broad Street. You just have a whole and weekend yes, of yes, Christmas music. Yes. Okay, uh, the basket fund. This is always important, yes. folks. Uh, individuals wishing to help provide the communities needy with Merry Christmas and a box full of food staples, send your contributions to the William Hall Rogers Basket Fund, First Tennessee Bank, that's Post Office Box 4880, Cleveland 37320 or you can drop off donations uh, at the First Tennessee Bank on Keith Street. And that's their new bank that yes. used to be Oliver's. And yes. It's really nice. Have you been in there? Yeah, I went to their really, ribbon cutting. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. It really, really is. Yes. I mean, you know, the first time I walked in, I thought, now where did everything at Oliver's used to be? Yeah, it's really. It's wonderful. It really and, is. And I, what I think is funny, they may not want me to share this, but their conference room used to be the bar. Oh, <laughs> Well, okay. Well, there's some little information for yeah. you right there. Yes. Now, every year, St. Luke's Episcopal Church does, uh, well, they have for, I don't know how many years. Anyway, it's the Bach lunch and Bach, like as, as in the composer Bach. 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 Yes, Bach. So they get the German in there. <laughs> and concert series. Now, yesterday uh, was the first one. So next Wednesday, December the 12th, Walker Valley High School Chamber Choir will be there. And lunch is available. Uh, a small donation is accepted for the lunch. Uh, usually it's soup and sal uh, sandwich. Uh, yeah. But it starts at noon, and it's there at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. So you people that work downtown, you might want a Wednesday. Just breeze on over there to St. Luke's and hear some really nice music and get you some food and make a nice little donation. And then the 19th will be Stephen Humphreys on the hammer dulcimer. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love hammer dulcimer. And Jesse Isley on the guitar. So there's some more Christmas things for you to do. Yes. And for you runners, after you do the reindeer run, yes. the girls on the run is having uh, a 5K run and a one-mile jingle bell jog, which Nancy and I, neither one, will be no, at either we of them. No, participating in that one either. No. Anyway, it's this Saturday. And it's at 11 a.m., so you have time to do the first one and then get your breath and eat a hot dog mm -hmm. and then go to this one. And the start and finish is at Cook's Food Store. It's not even very far of a drive. No, no. no just right in the same area. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's $20 for the 5K, $15 for the one-mile online registrations, and that's at www.girlsontherun. S E T N dot org and uh, a race t shirt for all pre registered runners and race day registration is twenty five dollars for the five K and twenty dollars for the one mile. And there will be awards for the top three male and female runners. And ooh, first place male and female receive a Garmin Forerunner. And wow. that's sponsored by Cooks, Panera and Alan Jones Foundation. So if you, you get win that garment, so if you're out running and you get lost, you just you know where you're, you can yeah. find your you can way. Buy, find your way home. Yes. But that's another great organization. That Girls is. on the run. And so yes. honestly, some of you runners, Cameron Fisher and some of the other yeah. my friends that run, that's probably nothing for y'all to run in the American Cancer run and then eat a hot dog yeah. and run again. So And if 
you're not an early morning person. That's true. Then you can just go out and do Girls on the Run. That's But very both true. of them are very worthwhile organizations. Okay, choir so concert to be December the 9th at First United Methodist. Now, I'm going to tell you this as it's in the paper, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. The combined choirs of First uh, United Methodist and Wesley Methodist invite you to bring a score or borrow one of ours to immerse yourself in the sound of this timeless music. Now, what they mean right there, I think, is Handel's Messiah. Nowhere in this did it say the Messiah, but I'm pretty sure when it says bring a score or borrow one that we're talking Handel's Messiah, it's going to be December the 9th at 6 p.m. It's free, and you sing along with the choirs, and there will be solos, soloists doing the solo parts, and then you would sing along on the choruses. And any of you that like to sing, that's wonderful. I have... In fact, I have, my own, I have two personal scores from Handel's Messiah. Yeah. But if you don't have a score, you can borrow one of theirs. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, say something. The 100th Home Dedication Ceremony for Habitat for Humanity wow. was yesterday. And uh, you missed it, but that's a milestone. It is. And I think we need to just Applaud share Matt that. and yes. everyone else at Habitat. Yes. All and the volunteers. And on December the 13th, there will be a two-family home dedication ceremony at the Arnold Avenue Southwest in Victory Cove. It's at noon, and everyone is invited. And if you've never been to one of these, uh, it is so... It's a moving experience. It is. It really is. And to see the joy on the faces of the people that are getting these homes. Who never thought they would own Absolutely. a home. Absolutely. And the sweat labor, that, uh, sweat equity that goes into it and everything. So, so yeah, they have, they've had to pay a price. Yes. Not a, dollar, not a monetary price, but yes. a price to get this home. Yes. Okay, the Nutcracker. What is Christmas without the Nutcracker? Not much. That's right. <laughs> so this is presented by the Tennessee Youth Ballet with guest artists from the Charleston. Now, that doesn't mean Charleston, Tennessee that Melissa was just talking about. This is Charleston, South Carolina ballet and sponsored by Wind Smiles and it'll be December 8th and 9th at 3 p.m. at the Dixon Center on the campus of Lee University and the tickets are $15 and $20 so for information 476-3030 and you know you got to have the Nutcracker for Christmas somewhere uh, somewhere somehow. Yes 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 so okay the library we want to keep them up in the forefront okay sounds of the season will begin uh yesterday and continue each Wednesday until Christmas in the community room at the library from 11.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. Hot cider will be served while you enjoy a break from work or holiday rush and listen to seasonal piano music being played. Uh, this is free. The Scholastic Book Fair will begin Monday and continue through December the 10th. Well, began Monday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, each year the book fair brings books for all ages at greatly reduced prices. So there's wonderful Christmas presents mm -hmm. for oh, your kids. Oh, stocking stuffers. Yes. And all monies raised from this book fair will be used to purchase additional books for the children's collection. The tween movie matinee for December is Elf on the Move. Oh, Elf the Movie. <laughs> uh -huh. Elf the Movie. <laughs> Elf the yes. Movie. And that and was a hysterical movie. It's Saturday it, at 11 a.m. and it's rated PG and it's open to all tweens between ages 6 through 12. Bond Life Coffee opened at the library December 1st. Be sure to stop and enjoy a cup of coffee. And we're at the yes. end, folks. We're getting the message. So <laughs> wonderful <laughs> day. Thank you all so yes. much. Come down to the Red Ribbon and see me today, 6% off, and we'll be open till 6. And Brene, take care of that broken leg. Okay. Folks, See you next week. And Bye -bye. if you're going to get a dog, adopt, don't shop. There you go.